All right, now that we have our whole character all done, which looks fantastic, we can go ahead and do the background. Now the background, I kind of sort of did like a relatively simple color scheme. Um, it was definitely a lot more paler than her actual character, uh, her, her actual look. So, and that is just because I want the character to stand out while the background can kind of just dim down a little bit. So anyways, let's just get started and let's pick out our colors. So I think in the colors that I did for the background, I'm thinking of doing a light blue or Crayola, um, a pale rose, whoops. Uh, let's see what else. I was thinking about doing some orange, but maybe that not that might not be the best choice. Let's go with a little bit more blue, shall we? Kind of maybe let's go with a turquoise or magenta as usual and our pink. So let's go with these for now. If anything, if you don't want to start on the background yet and instead uh, do something more like a digital or a planning kind of, or like color color lightly and kind of plan it out, you can do that as well. Uh, for me, I'm kind of going a bit on the fly here. <laughs> but anyways, let's just get started. So sometimes I like to also picture the colors in my head Oh, I forgot. I want to do orange for these little bats area and, and the little kid and the little kitties. But anyways, let me think for a little bit. So if this may, the, if this whole thing is more like majorly just purple and pink, the background I wouldn't imagine orange looking very good unless I was doing super Halloween based. Hmm. So let's say if this is orange, orange, maybe blues. Pillows can be kind of alternating, whichever it is. I think I will go with some orange curtains. Now, of course, if I mess up on this, then it's whatever. I'm not treating this as like, oh, it's like a masterpiece. Um, so that's why I'm kind of lenient on this. But, you know, I still want to work hard on this. So I'm going to start with our orange. So I'm using a light orange right now as a base. And I'm calling the big areas first just because it's easier to get, you know, just get, get out of the way. And I think orange will actually work well because it's almost Halloween based, even though it's not Halloween season yet. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm just going to be coloring it in very, very lightly. Make sure that my grain is relatively, <clears throat> is relatively, um, even. You know, I don't want light parts and dark parts. I want relatively even. I want it to be pretty nice. Um... If the grain is a little bit showy, you know, if, if the grain shows a little bit too much, don't worry about it. That's just what colored pencils kind of do, you know. Especially when it comes to um, these kind of, this, you know, Crayola. Although Crayola is not bad to use, it can be grainy when it comes to certain types of paper. So, I'm calling this whole thing orange, or light orange. I'm putting light pressure on this. And that is good for now. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Notice how I'm basically just putting everything in the in a similar direction. You know, I always like to use the side of the pencil because it feels smoother this way. Okay, so once we have our base, we can go ahead and start layering some colors. So I'm actually going to be using another color. I'm going to be using our mango because that's a nice orangey color, orange yellow. I'm just going to be pressing a little bit harder on this. This this is just uh, to get another layer of color in. Make sure it's not too dark, but it's fine. It's an orange, and it kind of goes nicely with these purples and pinks. If you want to lessen the gaps between the uh, the coloring, you know, like little gap, the white little gaps here, um, you can basically just go do some cross hatching techniques. Basically, color in another direction to kind of fill in more lines. So I'll do the same thing over here, and of course, sharpen every time you can. Uh, mines are not mines don't need to be sharpened just yet, but when it starts getting too uh, stubby on the ends, you know, you want to sharpen it just because it just gives a better feel to your illustration. You don't want it to be too, uh, you don't want it to be too sharp and you don't want it to be, to be too dull. So just watch out. Yeah, I think this orange was a good choice. 
they're just some colors that kind of work together, you know, and some colors that just don't. <laughs> but anyways, now I'm going to be taking my orange, or my yellow orange, and I'm going to be taking, I'm going to just be making this a little bit more, whoops. See, this is what I mean by, you know, putting some tape on the uh, edges here so you don't color outside the edges, but it doesn't really matter anyway. So I'm just going to be coloring everything else, layering colors on top of each other so they blend well. So I think this is a good level of where I want my base to be. It's dark enough that, you know, you can see it, but it's not overpowering to the point where it's taking away from the character. A nice, another thing that is nice to have is basically cool versus warm. So most of these colors are very cool. What I mean by that is this is not a warm pink. A warm pink is more reddish pink. It's more like a rose. Um, this kind of pink is more like bubblegum or, 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 or like a hot pink kind of color. It's leaning more towards violet. That's why they look a little bit different. Not all pinks are the same. Just as the same as like not all browns or yellows are the same. You know, there's like a cool brown and then a warm brown. Cool brown meaning brown that's leaning more towards green and, and another one leaning more towards yellow or red or orange. So anyways, that is good for, that's good enough for now. I'm actually going to make this a little bit denser here because I want there to be a gradient here. So I'm just going to be a top gradient and it fades away at the end a little bit. There. Now if I want to add some folds to this, I can go ahead and add in some tan and then just color in the folds here. You can add folds if you want. I like adding folds usually just because it's kind of nice. I don't always have to line it. I can just use color. So something like that. And this can just be very done very, very simply. I'm only going to be doing it simply just because I don't want this to take away from our character. Our character is more complex in terms of color, in terms of coloring and smoothness, but the background can be dimmed down a little bit. You can add more folds here. Add more values here. Of course, because it's a pipe fold, you know, there's light, dark, and light, dark. There is dark on the inner corners, and then lights on the parts where it kind of goes upward. So far, so good. Uh, this looks a little bit dim. Whoops, no wonder. That's why. So that's good enough for the curtains. Now let's go ahead and add more towards the background here. So this can probably be a yellow, but I don't want it to be you know, completely yellow. Let me think. This could also just remain white as it is. Let's think. I want to add. I want to fill in my little bats here because I want that to be black. So I will use a one number one pencil. Uh oh. Oh no. Well, it looks like this dried out. <laughs> I guess I just didn't close it properly. That kind of sucks because that was a nice brush. So I'll use my brush pen for this. That sucks because I've actually wanting I've been wanting to use that one. I guess I'll have to just get another one. I don't really know how to revive dried out pens um, except for maybe adding some alcohol. But at this point, you know, since it's so dried out like that, you're better off um, oops, you're better off buying another one. Unfortunately. Sometimes you can even stock up on some just in case, but over time, the less you use these pens, uh, the drier it will get until it starts activating again. I thought I closed them properly. So just color all the bats in black. Once again, I'm also filling this in with black because it's also close to the character so that will make your eyes lead more towards her. I'm also going to color a black cat here. There. 
the other ones can probably be a different color. So let me think. I think a yellow would work for the background, but it's too close to the orange. But I can always, you know, maybe do a, like a light wash. Let's see what it looks like. It's not bad. I don't mind that, actually. Let's see. If I can't, if I do a blue, that's going to be... Yeah, I think I'll just do, I'll just stick with a yellow. But I will only do like a flat color yellow. So I'll be using a yellow here, and I'll just be coloring it. Make sure you, the, the brush pen has dried, so you don't have any weird smudges. So I'm only going to be coloring this very, very lightly. I don't think I'm going to add any um, other colors, maybe except for maybe the, towards the bottom where it's like a little gradient. But for now, I'm just going to be coloring this lightly, you know, making sure that there's no white, uh, um, odd white spots. And I'm only using a light because I don't want it, I don't want it to con you know basically I don't want it to um, be too harsh. So I'm coloring everything here, and I think this yellow is a good choice as well because it's light, and it also doesn't disturb anything else. Notice I'm coloring in more of a diagonal area and with the side of the pencil because it's a little bit more control that way. So that's good for the little back, the flat background here. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of golden yellow just for like a little added gradient. And by the way, the what I just realized was that this yellow actually makes the purples in this uh, illustration pop out more because they're complementary colors. So if you want one to stand out from the other, you know, use yellow when your character is made probably kind of purple, so it kind of stands out. That's not always, you know, the perfect rule. Sometimes it's better to just also use blue to, or other lighter colors to pop it out, but yellow usually works best to kind of show it off because they're complementary. Coloring that orange and coloring these orange as well. Because why not? There. So we have our curtains, then we have our little background that's really smooth. Now let's go towards more on the floor. So the floor, I've always kind of imagined it to be just like a white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my light blue. I'm just going to be lightly shading areas on the floor. So this is the floor here. Don't confuse it with the blanket. <laughs> so what I'm also going to do is I'm also going to take a coal gray and just coloring this along with it as well. And just, you know, lightly pressing. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just make sure that it's a good... nice and light. So once it's like very light, you don't really see much. I mean, you see blue, but it's not completely blue. It's more of like a cool white. Whoops, I missed this area here. That sucks. My one was all dried out. Let me see if I can keep it from working. Actually, there it is. It just needs to wake up a little bit. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> I thought this was gone for. Oh, well, that's good. So now let's go ahead and color the bottom. And this part's usually the easiest part, just because you know there's not much to color. Uh, the, co the character is usually the most complex at this point. And I'm always using the side of the pencil because that is usually the smoothest part of coloring. I don't like using the tip of the pencil because that's too scratchy. Now let's add a little bit of a cool gray and add some shadows. So on the shadows underneath, you know, the little pillows towards the back. As it goes away from you, you want it to put a little bit more in shadow. Let's add a little bit of shadow underneath the blankets. And also underneath her body. So don't forget that she's on a surface, so there will be a shadow. I 
especially around, you know, areas like spheres. You know, you want to add a little bit of cast shadow for the for the little yarn. So far, so good. Now let's go ahead and do the yarn. And I bet the yarn will probably be more of like a purplish red. So I am going to be using a pink for the base. So I'm going to be going in a circular motion and just filling the whole thing in. And the trick with coloring yarn ball is that you can also follow the form of the, of the of the strand. So for instance, if the strand's going this way, I'm gonna put my shadows this way for this part. Here, you know, changes direction again, changing direction again. But it kind of shows the form of where the yarn is going now. So let me zoom in a little bit. So you can see, you can start seeing a little bit of the direction of where all the strands are going. And it's, if it's in a circular motion, then you know you want to add some shadows around the round edges here. Let's add a little bit of orchid just to kind of give it a little pop of color. Now when it comes to the blanket, I want to reinforce that orange again. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my light orange again, see if that works well. Yep, works well. Another thing is that, you know, cool and warm colors also match pretty well together. So basically, you know, you have a cool floor and a warm and a warm blanket. So all I'm basically doing is basically just adding shadows around the folded areas. Let's see what this looks like as a whole. So far so good. Everything looks pretty good. You know, she's still standing out pretty well. So anyways, let's continue going on. So I actually want to add some stripes. Well, actually, maybe not. Maybe I will add some stripes. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, draw my stripes first using a, you know, a light brown. I'm just going to draw in my patterns here. So I want to make sure that my patterns are also flowing along with the forms of the blanket. So it's not just... Um, straight you know you want to you want it to kind of curl in and the like so this is more squiggly so you want to follow the forms if you want to look at it closer that's what I'm doing so notice everything is pretty much there And then we can basically fill it in. So I'm only using a light brown for this just because if I make it too dark, it's going to con conflict with the image here. So I'm, I'm using a lighter color for this. It's Once again, it's all more washed out just because I don't want it to um, distract. So be careful with using really, really strong colors for, um, for your background. You want to make it a little bit toned down. And for the little mouse, we can go ahead and color this with a cool gray. But because this is a little bit, you know, these two are kind of conflicting a little bit, I'm gonna add a little bit of my light blue, just to kind of make it a little bit darker. So it's also light and dark contrast there. All right, 
Now we have our pillows left, and our pillows are going to be a little bit challenging, just because I, if I want to make them kind of pink, I have to make them really light, or else it will conflict with this. So I'm thinking maybe I'll use a pale rose for some of these. So I want a pale rose for this kind of color here, for this pillow here. And I'm just going to be coloring this flat so far, just to kind of test if this color looks okay. That color looks pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to add a little bit of a pink around the rims, just to kind of give it a nice color change. I'm also going to add a little bit of my orchid. No, not my orchid. I'm going to I'm going to use a little bit of my mauve to add shadows to this. So it's a very very washed out purple tone here. Because this is in shadow, you want to also or you, because there's, you know, this is a 3D object, you also want to shade it a little bit, but not too much. Shade around the edges here. Looks pretty good. It's not standing out too much. Now let's go ahead and use a... Let's give her other pillow maybe like an orangish color. So let's go ahead and color it with a light orange once again. I'm going to darken it just a little bit. Just kind of press a little bit harder for the color to come through. It's not looking too bad either. I'm going to add a little bit of our brown or our tan and then coloring the ends of it just to kind of push that space back. And I'm also going to be adding a shadow over it because, you know, the girl's sitting right in front of it. So I'm adding a shadow here and around the folds just so it's interacting with her. So far, so good. Let's look at it from behind. And I think this looks pretty nice. Camera, stop moving. And now let's give the cat pillow maybe a light purple. So let's go with our pink pale rose again. Let's color this whole thing. Now let's add a little bit of our orchid, not too light, not too dark. Just add a little bit of shadow towards the ends here. Because it's round, you know, you want to give it a rounder shadow. I'm also going to be coloring in the features a little bit just so they don't look like it's it so it doesn't look like it's just colored over you know I want to fill it in and that is pretty much it for this illustration so let me go ahead and zoom out all the way out well this is zoomed out all the way <laughs> anyways that is pretty much it for this video let me go ahead and zoom in and see what we have done so we've pretty basically just done everything now you know, very very simple we did the background, we did the character and everything. The process was all very, very simple and methodical. Hopefully that this was a good exercise for you guys for working with Crayola. And let me know what you guys think. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.